15 months ago, Ange Postacago was celebrated as the man for Spurs, and many fans alike looked to him to finally bring home a major trophy for their beloved club. He was coming off winning the trouble with Celtic the season prior and had a point to prove. However, to this day, he has come under fire and is at serious risk of losing his job. And in this video, I'll explain it all, from the time he arrived at Spurs, and now to what is going wrong in the 2024-25 season. First, let's dial back to the 2023-24 season. The arrival of Ange brought a refreshment of tactical options to this underperforming side, and with an 8th place finish in the 2022-23 year and losing one of their best players of all time to Bayern Munich, Ange was put in a position to build the team back up and turn around their mentality. As in the past, talented managers have tried to accomplish the same thing. Okay, they, they, lost, uh, they lost confidence, they lost spirit, they lost to, to be a team. Excuse, 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 try to plot it, try to plot it every time. I hope the Tottenham fans don't get me wrong, but the only club in my career I don't have still a deep feeling with is Tottenham. Anyways, there was a lot riding on the shoulders of this one man, and he was prepared for the task ahead. And the fans were right behind him. One of the best managers in the world, Spurs is going to finish top 4, for sure. His new tactical setup was a great fit for this Tottenham team, and they seem to be firing on all cylinders. 2-0 win against May United, 2-1 win against Liverpool, 4-1 win over Newcastle, 4-0 win over Aston Villa. Results like this did not come often for a Spurs fan, and Ange seemed to be really onto something. His offensive mind and tactics and use of the double pivot midfield and defense was a great tool to help Spurs try over some of the Premier League's strongest opponents. With a 5th place league finish and very high spirits going into the next season, Spurs had a lot to be excited about, or did they? In the transfer window, he expended 16 players on loan and in sales, but only brought in 4 major signings. The recruitment was borderline questionable. They signed Dominic Solanke, Archie Gray, Wilson Odebert, and Lucas Bergwall. Over 140 million euros on attacking players alone left a sour taste in the mouth of the fans. Poor transfer window, not enough dynamic midfielders. Same season again, I love Ange, but this transfer window should have been so much better and bigger. A lot of the concern came from the depth of the squad and how limited they will be in the next season. Especially with the new Europa League format, their schedule is going to be very consistent. Ingested. In the past, Jose Mourinho has touched on this issue before. You know, the problem is that for the next uh, three weeks, we have lots of matches to play and we have exactly the same players. The problem is not just to play with these players, is that we are going to play with these players completely tired. But it comes down to Daniel Levy, the club owner, if he's willing to give the manager that much spending power to invest in a deeper team. He has a long track record of being a tight ass with transfers. An article by hardtackle.com perfectly says it. A force to be reckoned with is Daniel Levy. He doesn't know when he's beaten, and therein lies the problem. He won't admit defeat, ever. Right before I continue into the next chapter, I please ask you do me one favor hit the subscribe button. It would really help me out. Thank you. With the new season right around the corner, Tottenham fans were amped and some of them really thought they were going to push for a Champions League spot. What fools. In fourth, I'm going Spurs. Big Angie's Spurs. I think they're going to kick on that little bit from last year. Under Ange Postacog Blue. I think he's going to go one step further and we're going to qualify for the Champions League and finish in fourth spot. Ange Postacog was being seriously backed by the entire club and they thought he was going to be the man that would break the pattern of their poor form and things did not start in his favour. The opening match of the Premier League came against Leicester City, who were newly promoted and shouldn't have had a real chance against Tottenham. The match began well in the favor of Spurs, with them doing a good job of keeping possession and opening the scoring in the 30th minute. Ange ball was in full tilt, but they were having a bit of trouble actually converting their chances. In the 60th minute, Leicester equalized, and from there they lost their momentum, and the game ended in a draw. And I'll tell you, the criticism was not held back. Son, you are the best finisher in the team. Take a shot on goal. It's okay. Alluded to the fact that Hyoming Son only recorded one shot on goal throughout the entire game, which was out of the ordinary, meaning that Postecoglou must have changed something around, because that did not look like the same Spurs team that we saw four months ago. The next fixture was against the likes of Everton. I won't go too in depth, but Ange Ball worked, and Tottenham won the match 4 0. To be fair, though, against a team that's lost every game this season, but the stats compared to the last match were nearly identical. They again had tons of shots and had the ball almost the entire match, but the difference was that they were actually able to score this time around. But Turn that sort of dominance of your performance into you know, outcomes and results. And we did today, we looked really threatening. What would happen when Spurs actually had to face a team that could score goals and keep the ball? In other words, a team that wasn't in the relegation battle. Well, their third match of the season in the Premier League was against Newcastle, and we saw the Tottenham team collapse from the inside. On every set piece, the team would argue, and while they had the ball for the majority of the match, they could not score. 20 shots later, and they managed to sweep one by with an own goal by Dan Burns, but it didn't take long for Newcastle to come out and score two more. Safe to say, this left the fans angry. I've been saying it for months about, you know, Ange imposter no clue. He's a fraud. He's been figured out. We've seen it for months, right? Mm -hmm. 
and just defensive tactics are no good for the Premier League. Expecting to make 2 or 3 goals per game and concede 1 or more own goals is not a smart tactic in any league in the world. Ange has got to go. The consensus seems to be that Ange has been figured out by all the teams in the league and his tactics are no longer a surprise. They're easy to read and that's not wrong. But while the fans pleaded for a new manager, Arsenal was the next team they had to take on. This match was a huge one and there was a lot of pressure for Ange to have his team come through with 3 points. Spurs continued to hold the ball and try to score but they wasted so many chances again and again so when Gabriel scored a header, they had no chance of coming back. The obvious underlying issue this Tottenham squad has is their forward abilities. As a whole, they struggle to score any chances, and all their set pieces are some of the worst out of the top six clubs. The forwards are selfish with the exception of Sun, and I feel like Ange could get more out of the front line, but why isn't he? Well, a large topic of discussion is the Young Wales international Brennan Johnson. So far this season, he has started in three of their four games in the Premier League and hasn't had a goal contribution yet. But even with his terrible shot accuracy and aid ability to put the ball in the back of the net, Posti Koglu still rates him. Yeah, the other guys like Brennan and, and Wilson, and I think there's a lot of growth in them, and, and Timo hasn't had much of an opportunity. There's massive upside in Which obviously makes the fans very angry because why would you put a player up front who can't score a goal? If we compare Ange to past managerial track records, he has only 13 wins in the last 32 matches. Pochettino, before he was sacked, had 12. So no wonder fans are already done with him by now. He has failed to capitalize on things he has previously stated he would, and sure, it isn't helping him that some of the best players in the squad are on some wishy-washy form. The reality is, the results are extremely bad at the moment. You know, I think... Now, to end the video on a positive note, I think Ange deserves some patience, at least into this current season. There's been multiple times that Postecoglou has expressed his desire and drive to win a trophy for this club. If I came out here and said, look, this is going to take three or four years, yeah, it would relieve pressure. But well, I, don't, I don't want to wait three or four years. This year's an opportunity. And then, you know, why, why didn't we achieve last year? Why didn't we win something last year? The fact of the matter is, however, that Ange Postecoglou has always taken more than one or even sometimes two seasons to properly turn a team around. We saw with Celtic last season and Yokohama Marinos in 2019, his brand of coaching is definitely about long-term success. He inherited woeful playing groups and turned them into championship squads, almost all within two to three years of taking control. The success is what led him to Spurs, and upon his arrival, the team was not a coach's dream. If we look at the state of the squad and the previous man managerial failures, Ange was tasked with turning around results and changing the mentality of the club as a whole, something that's been a problem for a very long time and is obviously not easy to do. The expectation of overnight success is certainly unreasonable, especially in the Premier League and I think that Spurs fans owe this man some patience at the very least. Using Arsenal as an example, it took Mikel Arteta years of strategic signings and experimental tactics to finally turn the corner, so I'll let you be the judge. Do you think that Ange Postecoglou should be sacked or not? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.